Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and I want to ask you a quick question. Aren't you tired of getting your butt kicked? Isn't it getting old? What are you going to do about it? Let me share this story with you. Years ago, when I was in the, uh, let's say, decades ago, almost a century ago, when I was in the fourth grade, I was used to being made fun of, and it got really old. I was tired of it, but I was so easily intimidated because I was very insecure, and those kids had me convinced I was the ugliest kid in the yard. Now, what I want you to think about is this. I was laughed at. I was made fun of. I was rejected. I was ostracized. I was jeered at. I, whatever. It was done. And one time, my father gave me a coat, a red winter coat with a leopard collar. I loved that coat. To me, it was the most stylish piece of clothing I had ever gotten because my parents were pretty footy-duddy and practical in their taste. I was flamboyant, but they wouldn't let me go there. But this coat more, more lined up with my taste, so I loved it. So I hang it up in the closet. My father warned me because I wasn't that good with clothes. He said, now, don't get this dirty. You don't want to get this dirty because you don't want to deal with me. So I took really good care of that coat. I was very careful. And we were in class, and I came in and hung my coat up ever so carefully, buttoned it down so it wouldn't fall off the hanger. I was being really careful. And about halfway through the class, one of the kids came and whispered in my ear, uh, this guy named Billy. He said, Billy took your coat, took it off the hanger, threw it on the ground, on the floor, and stomped all over it. It's loaded with his footprints. I saw blood. Do you hear me? I was, I mean, Billy could pick on me. He could make fun of me. He could do all of that. I would not fight him back. I would not confront him. I would avoid him at every turn. But this time, he crossed the line. And when he crossed that line, I'm challenging you as I'm looking at you right now. As he crossed the line, I knew I had to deal with something here. Because I was going to have to deal with the big monster at home when I got to my papa. So, of course, he didn't get me in trouble when I told him what happened. It wasn't a problem. But when I dealt with Billy, Billy had made a mistake of going out the classroom during the class break. And he was coming in, clowning around. He wasn't paying attention to me. He didn't even notice I was standing there. I was laying in wait. When was the last time you laid in wait for something that you don't stop? And this guy walks in and he makes the mistake of passing me up and his back is toward me. You know, little chicken me, I ain't gonna hit him from the front. So he gets his back toward me and I jump up in the air and land on his back. I'm pounding, I'm pouncing, I'm kicking, I'm punching, I'm pushing, I'm digging my nails and I'm doing everything I can trying to tear that boy to shreds. That scared the boo-boo out of him. Trust me when I say that. I was so angry, there was no fear. See, when you get angry to a certain point, when you get to the point where you've had enough, there is no fear. Hmm, check that out. All of a sudden, you have superhuman strength you never had before. You have a courage, a boldness that never existed. Where did that come from? Now, so... I'm so full of adrenaline and anger and rage. I'm ready to kill him. I saw blood. I wanted to see his. And when I got through, the teacher pulled me off of him. He was hollering, squealing like a little mouse. Teacher pulled me off of him. Then he, he threatens me after he gets his composure. I'm going to kick your butt at 3 o'clock. So three o'clock comes, now I'm scared because I'm not angry anymore after I dust my coat off. So I head out there where he said to meet him, scared, hoping my anger would get me back up and get my nerve back up, right? 
Nowhere to be found. Where was Billy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That boy never messed with me another day. Never, ever, ever again. That ended. That drama. It ended right there on the spot. Sometimes when you feel like Satan and people and situations and circumstances and whatever, all of that's coming against you and you're tired of being the victim. My question to you is, are you tired enough? Because when you really, really, really get tired, you gonna kick somebody in the balls. You gonna kick somebody in the teeth. You gonna tell somebody off. You gonna end it. You're going to pull the curtain down on this one. End of story. That's going to be your, your uh, motto or whatever the word is. I can't think of the word. Your mantra. End of story. That's what you're going to always say. And when you say it and when you act it out and you play that baby out, they're going to know you're for real. And all of a sudden, like the Bible says, you're going to look around for all the people that used to disrespect you and make fun of you, mock you, jeer at you and all of that. And they can't be found. You're going to look for that demon that had you bogged down, bound up, tied up, tangled up in nonsense. You can't find the demon. Demon gone. You're delivered. Free. Just like that. Why? Your attitude. One time a friend of mine, my best friend, when in 1981, 1982, she and I became best friends. She had gotten saved a few, several months before I did. And she had twins, little babies. You see her comment on my videos a lot. She's Patty. <laughs> and her twins uh, were in toddler stage. And she was going to come and hear me. It's 1983. She was going to come to church and hear me preach my first sermon. Now, two hours before it was time, she calls me, several hours, I don't remember the exact amount, several. She calls me crying. She's all disappointed because she really wanted to come. But her babies, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, got sick. Oh, really? Well, see, Mama Sita got pissed. I ain't going to talk like a lady right now. Because this ain't time to talk nice and, and politically correct and polite and poised. and all. No, I was pissed. Because I said, how tacky, how low for a demon to pounce on and pick on little babies to get to the mama. That's ridiculous. So I started doing warfare. We got on that phone. I started binding, rebuking, casting out, cursing, everything else. And then when I got off the phone with her, I got down and dirty. I was going for blood. I was going for that demon's blood. And when I got through, Pat called me and said, guess what? I said, what? The babies are healed like they never were sick. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to get to a certain level of anger. See, we want to waste our emotions on people. But there are times you got to go for the spiritual. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Remember that. So there are times you got to fight fire with fire. God's fire is always way hotter than any kind of fire the devil and his little demons can conjure up. Trust me on that. As long as you're using the name of Jesus, you are in Christ, you're covered in the blood, you got the authority. You got the most powerful weapons, baby. Use them. Don't sit there and let the devil victimize you. Don't take it. Don't lay there and, and, and passively cry. Oh, you got an inheritance. Anyway, okay, I'm not going to fuss at you because I'm not trying to fuss. I'm trying to get you to see the attitude. This is just a word of encouragement. I'm not even going into a bunch of scripture. This is just a quick word of encouragement. You have got to get to the point 
where you've had enough. You ever see the, the movie, Singer. What's Love Got to Do With It? And she was constantly abused by this poop butt. And finally she had enough. And she started tearing into him, tearing in. When they got through, she was cut up, excuse me, bruised up, but he was wearing some battle scars of his own that she put on him. She finally fought back. That was the end of that. She went to court, said, all I need is my name. He can have everything else. And she soared to the top. Now, when will you get enough? When will you get enough of their abuse, his or her abuse? When will you get enough of the devil kicking you in your teeth? Yanking the rug out from under you right at the crucial moments of your life. When are you going to pull that to an end? When are you going to pronounce through your actions, your attitude, and, your, and the authority you take? End of story. Case closed. Hmm. Yeah. When are you going to say the end? No more. You got to get to the point where you're tired. And if you don't feel like you're tired enough to lose all fear, because see, when you get that tired, you don't have any more fear. It's like, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you whether I live or die. This ain't going on no more. I'll die putting such a hurting on you. You will never forget me. My mark will be on you for the rest of your life. If you kill me, you will never forget the hurt I put on your butt. So you have to have that kind of attitude when you're dealing in the spirit realm. you got to have that kind of attitude when you're ready for things to come to a screeching halt. When you say, enough! No more! Now, when will you be ready? How long will it take? For you to have enough. I got to add this. When you get to the point. Where you think you have enough. But you're not quite sure. Ask God to put it in you. If you can't pull it up. Ask God to put it in. Input. Output. Sometimes God has to add a little something something. In order for you to be able to rise up to the occasion and handle it.